Today is an episode about big toys, aka stuff that we have because we really wanted them. AKA stuff that Dom wanted in the van and that we argued and then I lost the battle and that we have in the van. How many do we have, five? We have five toys. Five big toys, toys. that we wanted. That you wanted. That I wanted. <laughs> that are not necessarily like super essential to van life living, but that are very fun. We are Dom and Maggie. We were traveling around the United States when COVID hit. Stuck at home, we sold our first van, Vanessa, to build a bigger one. After a few months in the shop, we are now back on the road with our new home on wheels that we named Vanessa Nessa. Tune in every Sunday for a new episode of Van Life Saga. When we were on the road last year, we had all sorts of flying things in the van when we let the door open. Truth is, we love having the doors open, but in beautiful Canada, especially up north and up west, everything comes in the van. So we went online, we went to different stores, dollar stores, and we tried to look for screens. You know, the cheap ones that already have holes in them, they're like magnetic, they're already broken when you buy them. Yeah, yeah. They suck. So now, we found these amazing screens yeah. from this company, local company in mm -hmm. Montreal, Quebec. Yeah. Yeah. And we were... I was mind blown. Mind blown. So we have two screens. One for the sliding door and one for the back door. This is custom made for the van. See, there's a moth. So the way it works, you put this in place and then this is that easy. Took. They have little Velcro. Velcro. Oh wow, so it stays tidy Boop. like you oh wow. You put this down. You put this down. And you can sleep with the door open. Oh, I can't see you anymore though. Where are you? Oh yeah, sure. Oh you wow, that's a magnetic door. It's a magnetic door. So you have this little thing here, you pull on it. You go in the van. If you think this is badass, yeah. come see the back door screen. Oh, oh yeah, it's true. It's the even more, it's screen. even more. So it's right there, as you can see. Oh my God. You put it this down. so professional. Oh boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So it also serves as a blackout. Say you want to have access to the garage. Yeah. You put this here. Here. Okay. You put this here. Yeah. Okay, you have your garage door. Oh my god. And they have clips here. <laughs> this is a bit intense. Intense? You mean insane? Insane. But now I'm inside the van and I want to read with the door open. Okay. So I'm going to roll this up. Ver that's the loft mode, right? The chilling in the van mode. No screen, right? No screen. No screen. But I guess I remember there are... Shh, don't spoil okay, it. Okay, go ahead. So what's the last mode called? The crouching tiger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. You disappeared. Oh! Okay, I think I see where you're going. Oh, okay, so it's a, it's a full mosquito net for the back door. That's incredible. And it disappears in They have a the little bed. space for it. So you can even sleep with the back door open. And so no one sees your garage. No mosquito comes in. Fresh air comes in the van. You can have a total blackout. You have a total blackout on top and the bottom. You can open your garage door. What else? And that's it, right? That's it. Oh, and you can roll it up all and the you way. You can up. roll it up all the way. How sweet is my toy? That's my toy. Yeah, well, it was your idea to get one. So one, yeah, exactly. you can have two, that one. One, two, ready, kick it. I need a lot of electricity in my life, whether it's for video production, photos, you know, conferences online, writing to clients, making sure all the batteries are full, the drone's gonna fly, etc. I need batteries. In 2020, we had a few shortages when we were on the road with Vanessa. In the middle of the night, I had to work and then bang, no more batteries because no more sun, the weather was bad. We didn't drive enough in a day so the batteries couldn't recharge. 
And I was like, God damn it, what should I do? I don't know what to do. So now we have a generator. And every time I'm gonna say generator, I'm gonna say generator. Like they do in uh, other countries. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not a big fan of generators. Why? Because a lot of people on the road that we've seen do not have the generator's etiquette. What is the generator's etiquette? Here it is. Rule number one, you're not supposed to live off your generator 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This is for emergencies. That's rule number two. Rule number three, try not to start your generator during the night because uh, people are sleeping and it's... This one is silent, but it still makes noise, you know? Rule number four of the generator's etiquette. Try to use this when there is no one around. The only two or three times I would have used this in the West was when we were alone up north in the forest with no living souls around, except grizzlies and black bears. And rule number five, try to use your generator as for a short period of time only. You're not supposed to use your generator all week long. So that's the generator's etiquette. Very compact, not too much noise, very reliable, nine hour autonomy, okay. and very clean power for your fancy tools or a fancy machine in there. Okay, and that's what we want. it's very easy to use. Okay, show You'll me. See. Watch this. As I said, I can carry it, so. Oh wow, you can swing it with your arms at 60 years old. Yeah, <laughs> shut up. Okay, Paint my numbers, I need a bunch of pictures to show you what to do. Just make sure it gets some air, just turn the valve on, just turn the power on, choke if you need it. And ready to go. So I can see here we have a 12 volt outlet, an AC outlet. We have everything we need to work and uh, make sure the van stays alive on the road, right? That's right. And okay. again, as you said, it's to make sure it stays alive. You need to work, you need the power. This is going to save you if it's been raining for four or five days yeah. you're in the middle of nowhere. This is the tool to use. And as you see, easy to carry, easy to store. So it's the ultimate backup. The backup you need. All right, Dad, what are we making? Oh, oh, oh. A secondary table. And this is where it's gonna go. Okay there. That's pretty good when it swivels. It's first being cut oversized so that I can trim it because of the size of the piece of wood. I'm cutting it oversized and it will then be finished on the... Uh, Just to kiss you baby walk a million miles I say my love you so You gave me a charge and it's... Is it going to be this big? What, 24 by 36? Is that too big? Let's try it out. <laughs> oh boy. Turn that seat around. Say we want to swivel those seats. Is it even possible to swivel the seats if the table's that big? Nope. So that's exactly my point. So you'd have to remove it? I have a rough cut of 24 by 36 inches which is what the doctor ordered. <laughs> We're gonna go to 23 by 32. Give me a charge, it feels so fine. Send it through right up my spine. So a rounded corner, you just cut beyond the line, and then with the belt sander, you can actually get closer to the line and finish it to the way you want. I said, my love is so Mais moi, je sais pas voir. T'as trop une grosse tête. Non, c'est toi qui as une petite tête. So here's a 23 by 34 inch oh, rounded corner table. Sweet. So this is going to be the second table, big table for food and drinks and having people over. Or maybe if we ever wear, if we're, we're, maybe if we ever work both of us at the same time at the table, in like a diagonal. And small table is for you when you're alone in the van and you don't want a big setup, and it's big enough for your laptop. So that's a very necessary toy. 
Are you being sarcastic? Yo, souvent, whatever. A little bit high. So where do I put my table? Other side. I don't have some hands. So we have two tables. Very happy. Very happy. Am I done? Thank you, Sylvain. Am I done? When you are traveling around Canada and the United States, it's always fun to park the van in the cities you're visiting and walk. Sometimes, however, you have to drive around town to go from point A to point B, and with a 21 feet long truck, this can be quite a hustle. Marie and I were discussing about what kind of tools or what kind of toys could we have to go faster when we're visiting town. Until we found you the, found until i found the ultimate tool for traveling within a city when we are parked with the van on the road and this is electrical scooters <laughs> and many times during our travels last year we could have used something like this and you already had the time to make little like stands for them yes so the way it works in the van is that my father and i made some little stances like this so they don't move around and it's super fun you are way too excited about this so these m10 electric scooters by turbo ant are quite amazing they can go up to 20 miles per hour they have a range of 18 miles they have a 350 watt motor it has a brake here it has a little bell just in order to make sure people around knows you're driving here and once you hit this for a few seconds autopilot comes on like so cruise control yeah the cruise control comes Whoa. on so it's super fun to drive super safe it has three speeds no nah, it's not super fun to drive is he already gone? Oh, he's gone already. But super fast! Oh, wow! Oh, that is fast! I think I'm gonna race him. So it's super fun to drive. It has three speeds. Uh, speed number one is kind of slow. It's like walking speed. Speed number two is like when you're on a little truck. Speed number three is the sport speed, the one I'm on all the time. Very cool. You can charge them with AC. It takes around five hours to charge. We can charge them in the van. It's pretty cool. And uh, it has big tires, so you can basically go in rocks. Let's, let's give it a shot. Woo! Off-road! <laughs> Oh. Anyways, that's a hell of a toy. And uh, if you're interested in one, I heard there was a Labor Day sale up to September 7th. And you can have uh, up to $200 off. So if you want to be as cool as me, go ahead. Yeah. While I uh, put this back in the Saga machine. Like a Thunderbird. Look at that. We have two scooters ready to go Sweet, when we yeah. travel. Okay. As you may notice, or as you may see, these are not essential. Nope. They're fun to have. Yes. Some of them are needed and will make a big difference on the road, but that's why we call them toys. Not fundamentally needed. Not fundamentally needed. Just very fun to have. Just very fun to have. Especially scooters. Especially Since scooters. Since I have the scooters, I'm always driving around on my scooters, like the van. Why do you talk like Donald Trump? Scooters, like the van is parked somewhere when I get somewhere, and I just drive around and meet people with my scooter. That's true. And at one point they're like, weren't you like traveling in your van? Oh yeah, it's parked like two kilometers away that way <laughs> I have my scooter now so yeah yeah fun stuff so get yourself a scooter so we can race next summer when we meet you somewhere <laughs> in Ottawa <laughs> yeah all right see you next week bye bye, bye. French Canadian lesson number nine. A beurre épais. A to exaggerate. If you look at it that way, there is no direct translation. But let me explain what the words mean. Beurre 
means to put some butter, usually on a toast. Epe means thick, like a thick layer of something. So when you say beurre epe, it technically means to put a lot of butter. And when you say to put a lot of butter, it means you exaggerate. So for example, if someone shows up and says he or she is selling her Sprinter for $250,000, well, you could potentially tell him or her that she is putting a thick layer of butter, aka she is exaggerating. <laughs>